Hi, I'm Gary Eckstein. When I'm not working as a marketer, I'm a PhD student at the University of Southern Queensland here in Australia. As per all students, I guess, particularly if you're a research student or a master's student, you'll need to do literature reviews. To understand the literature can be very time consuming, particularly if you have a lot of literature, a lot of papers to, or books for that matter, to review. You might have seen, and let me show you an example, you might have seen various, um, various reviews or papers that had these incredible charts that really bring out the meaning in a whole lot of different papers. Like this, for example, like that chart, and so on. Now, just so you're aware, that's where those charts come from. The good news is it's really simple to use technology to analyze your papers. And I'm gonna show you now how we can do that very, very simply without any coding needed. I'm going to show you how they created, for example, these different charts and how they analyzed uh, the, the various literature using something called bibliometrics. Don't worry, bibliometrics is an R package and R is a coding language, I guess you could call it. But again, as I've said, we don't need coding. I'm going to show you how to do this, how to get in incredible results without coding knowledge. Whether you have, yeah, 10, you know, 10, 10 papers in your corpus or, or 10,000 or 100,000, you can really make sense of it with a tool like Bibliometrics. I recommend you watch this tutorial in its entirety and I'm going to go fairly fast through it and then go back and follow the various steps. Also, in the description of this tutorial, I'll, I'll put a link where you can see the various things you might need to copy and paste and so on. So just, just follow along. Again, I'm gonna go fairly quickly. The first thing we need to do is install R. Again, don't worry, it is a coding language, yes, but it's actually just a few clicks. So what you need to do is come to the R homepage if you're on Windows, such as myself, but, but you can do it for Linux or Mac OS as well, you would go download R for Windows and you would install the base. And, and as, as, uh, as described, binaries, this is what you want to install R if you're installing for the first time. So that's what you want to do. What you'll do is, is once you download uh, R, you'll have an executable file on your computer, if you're on Windows, and all you need to do is double click that and install using the defaults. Just install it. You don't need to do anything else. No coding knowledge needed. Once you've installed that, once you've installed R, you come across to rstudio.com. Then if we come to under open store source, uh, sorry, under products, open source R Studio, if you click on that, and if you scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that you can download either the open source edition or the uh, desktop pro edition. Honestly, it's up to you. I've installed the open source edition, uh, but both the open source and the RStudio desktop pro will work well for you. And it really depends on, on your needs. So what you would do in that case is you would just download RStudio. And again, as per any application, you'll just double click it, accept the defaults and install it. That's it. So now you've installed something called R, which is the coding language. You've installed something called R Studio, which we just need to do in this case. What we want to do now, what we need to do, and this is a once-off. So, so downloading the steps we've just done so far is a once-off. You only need to ever do it once or on each computer you're using. We now need to install what's called the packages into R or the bibliometrics package. It's very simple, don't worry. So in your computer, just search for R Studio because it would have now been installed and I'll just click on it, the R Studio app, and it'll open up. We'll just wait for this to open up very quickly. Right, what we need to do now is on the left-hand side as we look at the screen, under console, we just need to install two packages here. So the first one we're just going to start type in the install.packages and, and as you can see on the screen there, and all we do is click enter on your keyboard. Various messages will come up. Don't worry too much about that. And um, something called Shiny will now be installed. We'll just wait for that to finish, which it has now. Once that is finished, we're going to install, and this is just a once off, 
Uh, sorry, just bear with me. Why is this not copying and pasting? It'll just take one second, sorry. Um, okay, so now we need to install something called Bibliometrics. Again, a once-off. So I'm just going to click Enter. I've just pasted it in there. I'm going to click Enter and it'll install Bibliometrics. We'll wait for this to finish. Okay, it's finished. Nice and easy. So we don't need to do these steps that we've just done again, as, as I've said. Those are for the first time. Let's go away now. What you need to do now is go and get your a bibtext file, um, which is, is a, a file type of references, I guess. Um, and in this case, I'm going to use Web of Science. I find Web of Science uses uh, works very well uh, for the analyses. You can use Scopus as well, but I'll be demonstrating using uh, Web of Science. So, for example, let's say we want. Uh, we want to know, we want to analyze all documents with a title of, uh, let's put in here, um, marketing mix, with marketing mix, and, and you'd build your own criteria, with the title contains marketing mix, and let's add a date range of, say, um, let's just do, uh, 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 let's do a custom from 2010, um, what is the format they want here, uh, 01, for the month and let's just go oh one and i'll just copy and paste this uh and let's just do that up into 2022 for example okay and we'll just perform our search so you would obviously do this for your topic or the papers you want you can refine that search etc etc once you've refined your search and discovered the number of documents you want in this case we've got 274 but you might have 20,000 or however many what you need to do is click export and then bib text. So export bib text. What you want to do here is select all your records. So in this case, one to 274. I should have said rather that the first thing you need to do is come on to, sorry, come on, uh, come to uh, record content, click the down arrow sorry i just um i'm just going to quickly just i'm going to click the down arrow make sure you select full record and cited references so full record and cited references so you can see you can export up to 500 records at a time in this case i could just download the one file but if you have more than 500 records you would need to download multiple uh, bib text Files. In other words, you would put in here 1 to 500, and then you would do that export again, and then put 501 to 1000. The next one would be 1001 to 1500, and, and, and do multiple files. But in this case, it's just one, so I'll click export, and that'll export to my uh, computer in, in, in very short time. It doesn't take too long. Okay, so you now have a, a um, uh, what's called a bib file, which is, is what we need, a bib text file. Just to sidetrack a little bit, if you have less, if you only have one bib file that you needed to download, in other words, 500 records or less, you don't need to take this step I'm about to go into. But if you have more than 500 files, we need to combine those multiple bib files. It's actually really simple to combine bib files. All you need to do is open your files in uh, notepad or, or, or a similar notepad editor and just copy and paste all the entr entries from your multiple files into one single bib file. So for example, here's the, the document I, uh, I downloaded a, a few seconds ago. If I open this in, for example, an, a, a notepad editor, I'm using notepad++, but it could be anyone, you can see there's a whole lot of entries in here. So what you would need to do is you would just select all the entries, copy them, paste them into a new file with a .bib extension. Um, so your, what we're looking for then is your eventual file will have all your records in there. So if you had a thousand records in your original search from Web of Science, your final file will have all those 1000 uh, records in it. Right, just going back. So we did the one soft when we installed um, R, we installed R Studio, we then installed the various, the two different packages we needed, the sh uh, Shiny package and the Bibliometrics package. So going forwards, every time you need to analyze your data, you're going to do this because you don't need to do those other steps except from Web of Science, export your bib file and have a single bib file. So to start up the GUI or the 
easy way of using, without having to use R coding, the easy way of using uh, um, bibliometrics, the package called bibliometrics. The first thing we're going to do is do this library and then brackets bibliometrics and I'm going to click enter and I'm in R studio again by the way just doing that okay so then we want to open something called biblio shiny I'm just going to click enter on that and you'll notice that immediately in my uh, in my web browser bibliometrics is opening and now we don't need to use code what we need to do now is load that um, that bib file we have. So we click on data. We click on load data. So I'm just going to move a few things around on my screen. Now this is important. Under import or load, if you click the down arrow, click this import raw file. And then, yes, it's Web of Science we use, so we're just going to leave it as Web of Science. I then will browse to find my file. I'll click Open. Oh, sorry. I'll click Open. Once the upload is complete, we click Start. So that's loading your bib file, your data, into Bibliometrics. And we'll just wait a second while that happens. There's a lot of data there. To use Bibliometrics is unbelievably simple. I'm not going to go through everything. I'll just go through it, uh, uh, you know, relatively quickly. So because we've got our data here, we can do different things. We can go into filter. Um, we could click run and we can search on different data, for example. But this is where it gets more and more powerful. So going, going back to those sort of those beautiful charts and the actual analysis of the data. Let's do this. Let's go into, I'm just trying to think, sources. Let's go into sources. Um, let's go into most relevant sources. Uh, we always have options, or most of the time we have options to the right of the screen, so you can change those as you see fit, and you'll always click Run to run the actual query. So in this case, we're looking for the most relevant, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, sources, and we can see that um, the Journal of Marketing has, has published seven times with that uh, search we did in, in um, uh, Web of Science, sorry. So Journal of Marketing is published seven times, and these are the other ones, Sustainability, Five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, lots of other stuff. Let's look at the uh, conceptual structure. If we go into thematic map, uh, we can choose the field. If it's author's keywords, we can even go into titles and do things like biograms, et cetera. But let's go into author's keywords. We'll click Run. Let's see what comes up. Okay, and we can here see which are emerging or declining themes and so on. Uh, you can change the very various text editing. Of course, you can also view different uh, or create different views of it. You can also see the tables of the data and so on. Now, on the table, if you want to export for your analysis in Excel or to include in your literature review, you can just export to Excel, for, for example, or to CSV. On these various maps, if you want to get the graphics, and, and I'll go back to that paper we looked at, such as that, all they've done is they've, in Bibliometrics, they've hovered and then clicked Download Plot as PNG. That's it. So they've clicked Download Plot and it's opened and they've then copy and pasted it into Microsoft Word or similar. But you can go through all this. Once you've finished with Bibliometrics, it's quite as simple as just closing the browser window and if you really want to you can also close our studio and I'm going to do that to demonstrate I won't save for now I'm going to click don't save so going forwards next time and I have mentioned this a few times but going forwards all you need to do in the future is you can either use that existing exported file from um, from web of science for example or you can do a new search and export your file once again as a bibtex file, get it into a single bib file. Then you will open RStudio. So I'm just looking for RStudio. You open RStudio, then you will put in your two search criteria. Not really sure why my pasting isn't working. Just give me one second, sorry. Um, there we go. So in the future, you don't need to install um, 
bibliometric, you know, bibliometrics or install the packages again. All you need to do is put in these two commands, click enter, and you'll notice that in, in a few seconds time, uh, my browser will open with bibliometrics. And again, what you would do is just load your data and you can analyze your data and include it. That's how simple it is. Please like this video, share it with your colleagues so they can benefit as well. But thanks for joining me. I'm Gary Eckstein.